As a teacher, you understand the pivotal role that multiplication plays in the mathematical journey of your young learners. It's not just a skill. It's a gateway to higher level math concepts. That's why finding effective strategies for teaching multiplication is crucial in your teaching toolkit. Today, we're gonna to explore tried and true methods to simplify and enliven the process of teaching multiplication, ensuring your students build a strong and confident foundation. Stay tuned. Educational rock stars, welcome back for another episode of One Classroom Over. My mission is simple to equip you with actionable tips, transformative stories, effective classroom systems, and expert insights for your K 5 classroom. I'm Farah, also known as the Center Fairy, your go to guide for all things for simplifying your teacher life. Each episode dives deep into key facets of the teaching experience, from lesson planning and classroom management to student engagement and professional growth. If you're new here, make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button and click that bell so that you never miss out when I go live or drop a brand new video here on the channel. Today, we're diving into the topic of strategies for teaching multiplication. So whether you're sipping coffee at home or binge watching while prepping lesson plans, crank up the volume and get ready for a dose of inspiration and empowerment. Let's dive in. Before starting to teach multiplication strategies, your students need to have a solid understanding of repeated addition and skip counting, specifically by fives and tens. It's also important that their mental addition and subtraction skills are solid for basic facts. If your students need it, review those concepts before starting multiplication strategies. Need games or printables to help with these foundational concepts? Make sure you check out our review in a snap line of no prep printables or our squares your brain math games, which will save you time planning and give your students the engaging review that they need before moving on. Okay, let's chat strategy. Starting with the basics, the double up strategy is an excellent way to introduce your students to multiplication facts. This method focuses on multiplying by twos, turns multiplication into a simple addition of the same number. For instance, four times two becomes four plus four. In the classroom, start with real life examples. Use objects like pencils or fruit to demonstrate the concept visually. Then gradually move to abstract numbers. Incorporate songs or rhymes about doubling can make this strategy even more engaging and memorable. Building on the double up strategy, the double double takes it a step further for multiplying by fours. Here, students double a number and then double the result again. For example, find three times four, double three to get six, and then double six to reach 12. To practice this in class, use interactive math games where students have to find pairs of numbers and their doubles. This not only reinforces the concept, but also adds an element of fun to the learning. The double, double, double strategy is an extension of these previous methods, ideal for multiplying by eights. Do you see a pattern here? It involves tripling the doubling process. For instance, to calculate three times eight, Start by doubling three to get six, double six to get 12, and double 12 to get 24. These strategies are why your students having a strong foundation of repeated addition and their doubles is so essential. Now, most students pick up the strategy for multiplying by 10 quickly. It's often learned in kindergarten or first grade. We can use this strategy to help us with multiplying by fives. To use the strategy, students first multiply by 10 and then divide the quantity in half to get the multiple of five. For example, if you want to multiply three times five, multiply three times 10 to get 30, and then divide the value in half to get 15. Now, this can be a more advanced strategy and it really needs the students to have a firm grasp of doubling numbers. If they can double, they can usually undouble. Now, if students aren't firm on this doubling skill, then have students count by fives the number of times the other factor. For example, five times seven, we count by fives seven times to give us 35. Once students have multiplying by fives and tens down, moving on to multiplying by sixes and nines should be a breeze. 
This strategy uses five and 10 to make multiples of six and nine. With this strategy, students either multiply by five and add a group to make six groups, or they multiply by 10 and subtract a group to make nine groups. It does require their addition and subtraction facts to be solid, or at least have scrap paper nearby for a place to work it out. For example, if you want to multiply six times six, then you multiply six times five to get 30 and add one more group of six to get 36. Therefore, six times six equals 36. Similarly, if you wanna multiply six times nine, then you'd multiply six by 10 to get 60 and then subtract one group of six to get 54. Six times nine equals 54. Incorporating these strategies for teaching multiplication can help your students finally master those facts. Each strategy offers a unique approach to understanding multiplication, catering to different learning styles and preferences. Remember, the goal is not just to memorize facts, but to build a strong understanding and love for math. As such, it's important to remember when you start teaching multiplication, you start at the foundation of what multiplication actually is. Don't rely on tricks and strategies only. They are simply meant to help students learn ways to do multiplication mentally without memorizing a bunch of facts. Once your students have been taught the strategies that I've mentioned, you should provide them with practice sheets and have graphic organizers for the strategy. If you're a member of the One Classroom Over Insiders, check your email for a little surprise. As you experiment with these strategies in your classroom, observe what resonates with your students and feel free to adapt. After all, every classroom is a unique ecosystem of learning. I'd love to hear about your experiences in using these strategies. Which one worked best in your classroom? You can shoot me a DM on Instagram or leave me a comment down below. Until next time, keep being educational rock stars. Now, if you're looking for more tips, strategies, and simple systems to take back into your classroom to make your life a little easier, check out the other videos on your screen. Thanks for watching and keep being an educational rock star.